So, uh, as I've just been talking rubbish anyway, you are all in the Things You Never Knew Maidens Make You Do session. Hello, my name is Paul. If you want to tweet and mention me, it's at pvatterson. If you have Maidens Make Issues, do not tweet <laughs> them to me there. There is a website where you can go on. So the good bit of news I'm going to give everyone now, right at the start of this, is that this is the only slide. The only one. So enjoy it. Savor it. <laughs> And we can now get rid of the which everyone loves. <laughs> so, let's start off by, I want to start off by just talking a little bit about what Maven's Mate is. So, um, there's a lot of confusion. So, I work for Maven's. Maven's are a Salesforce partner. Uh, we work in the healthcare and life science industry, so we only focus on that vertical. Um, I'm a technical architect by day, and Batman by night, who knows. Um, but, Maven's Mate, is an open source tool. It has nothing to do with the company, okay? The name came from the fact that Joe, uh, so Joe Ferraro, who is the main contributor, um, he is the CTO of Mavens, and to put it bluntly, he just got really pissed off with Eclipse. I mean, is there any Eclipse fans in the room? One. One, get out. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, Eclipse, and this is a few years back, you know, this is five, six years, probably quite longer than that ago, and it was just, it was slow, it was taking its time, it was eating memory, and so Joe was using um, Sublime Text, and at that point, TextMate, anyone ever used TextMate with maybe the Mate here back in the day? Um, and so he just went away and wrote this, and he said it was going to be a friend for people at Mavens, the developers to use, and then thought, oh, I'll give it away for free and see if anyone else cares about it, and lo and behold, it's now the most popular Salesforce IDE out there, I'm pretty sure. Um, Probably the, it's probably the most popular un-Salesforce only one, in fact. Um, so it is an open source project, so everyone here knows a bit of JavaScript, right? Everyone here? Because if you don't, Lightning is going to be fun. Um, so everyone knows a little bit of JavaScript. If you want to go and see a great implementation of a Node.js application using JS Force, um, Electron, which is a window framework, um, and also <coughs> integrating with all Salesforce APIs, this is where you go. So Maven's Mate is actually four things, really. You have the desktop app, which you all have running, um, and that just creates a server. And all we're doing is we're just sending messages to that server, and that server is then talking to Salesforce in the background. Um, and the way we can send messages to that server are we can literally send messages. So if you wanted to use Maven's Mate on the command line, you can send curl requests just to your local host or a variation of your local host and it will work. Um, but everyone prefers to work in a text editor, so we have plugins for VS Code, Sublime Text, and Atom. So, first, first thing that you never knew Maven's Mate could do is A, be used as a command line if you wanted to, but B, you could edit it. If there's a feature you want in there, have a stab at it. Take a go, take a go at implementing it, submit a pull request, and the team can look at it and see if it can fit in. They can help improve it if it needs additional work. But you know, feel free to contribute and help to this. This is not one of those things that's owned and locked away in isolation. Okay? So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk through a bit of a demo application I've done. Um, and we're just going to see some of the things that you can do in Maven's Mate that a lot of people might not be aware of. Um, how's that for size of the back? Bigger? Smaller? Is that okay? Cool. Um, so we're going to talk through some of the things you can do in that that I use in my day-to-day -day life. Like, seriously, I am, this is the only thing that, ne this and Chrome, are the only two things that never get closed down on my laptop. When I have to restart my laptop that once every three months, like, it's a, you know, I'm just like, oh, I've got to close this down now, and I've got like nine of these open <laughs> with different projects going. So, <coughs> these are all things you can do day-to-day. -day. So, First thing is, I've opened up a project. Um, a good question to ask is, does everyone recognize this user interface from Maven's Mate? Is there anyone that does not recognize this user interface from Maven's Mate? This is the newer version of Maven's Mate. I would highly recommend you go away and upgrade because there's all of the stuff I'm going to show you should work with old versions, but being on the new version is obviously ideal and much better. Okay? Um, and as you can see, this is all written in Lightning Design System, so if you want to go away and see how Lightning Design System can be used as well, is that we spent a lot of time working on this um, to get it to look like 
Salesforce. So um, I've got a really simple project because I'm actually quite a simple guy and I'm not that good a programmer. Um, I've got a page here, which is a demo page. Uh, we've got some style sheets. Uh, we've got a header, a bit of, a, a bit of text. Um, a URL, an image we're loading up from uh, a static resource. Um, we have a static resource, uh, we can see here, which is really, you know, inventively named test zip. Um, anyone gather how I got that name? And then we've got custom tab. So this is just my application because, you know, I'm not that smart, it's very simple. Um, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up the command palette. So the command palette is the most powerful thing in every version of the Maven's main plugin. Um, like, the mouse and the trackpad, you never want to touch. If you're using the mouse, your hands are away from the keys. Have your hands on the keys. It's where they're comfortable. It's where they live. We're developers. We don't need mice. We want to, like, who was in Peter's command line session this morning? Anyone? Else? Yeah, like, you want to you live on the command line or in a command palette if you're using a mouse. Like just run away and hide. That's for like it's for people who aren't comfortable with fingers. Um, so if you open up the command palette on a Mac, Command Shift P. On Windows, I think it's Control Shift P. Um, you'll get this. So first of all, you're going to get a bunch of stuff in here that Sublime, in this case, or Visual Studio Code or Atom provide that allow you to do amazing things with your code. So if you're working on a JavaScript piece, or if I'm Working on a file, I want to set the syntax to be Ruby on Rails. I can do that and it'll color scheme it like it's Ruby on Rails. Um, I've got a linter in there which allows me to run rules. Um, <coughs> you can do all sorts of jazz in here. Yeah. For those three people in the world that use OCaml, you can set it to OCaml if you want. Um, you can install new packages. You can do really cool stuff in this. But the thing we care about is if I type in Maven's Mate here, you'll see there's a big long list of Maven's make commands, okay? And these are, some of them aren't listed up in the drop-down window because some of them don't make sense to have there. So the first thing we're gonna do is, as you can see, I'm going to, um, where is it, open in, oops, open in web browser. So if I've logged into my project, okay, let's go open up my web browser, I can go straight in, you know, I've saved a few clicks, I didn't have to go in through the wonderful Salesforce login process again. Um, and it's nice and simple for me to do. And anyone notice that I was on a particular resource, my demo.page, and it's opened up that same resource for me. It's quite nice and simple to do. It's a little trick, but one that you know, just makes things a little bit easier for you. Um, so let's go over and look at my demo page in my demo tab. And it's, oh, it's broken. All right, well, we've got a stuff to resource broken. We'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. That's probably just me being rubbish. Um, but we've got some wonderful red text as a header. Um, some very nice blue text as well. Um, but, you know, I, I've, I've shown this to my boss. Um, you know, his user story was, as a boss, I want to see a super demo with red text, blue text in the picture. Um, uh, so that I can show my boss that we have red text, blue text in the picture. It's one of these revolving things. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to fix it. So uh, we all know that obviously that that icon here means that I uh, can't find that resource, right? So it's probably not in the static resource. So well, let's fix that first of all. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back in here and there's a command here called create resource bundle. Who's used that before? Okay, so for the rest of you, this is going to blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I hit create resource bundle, and it's going to bring up a list of all the static resources it knows about. And I'm going to choose test resort, uh, test zip. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a new folder for me here called resource bundles. Now, uh, JavaScript and CSS and images and all of these very you know trendy new web things that people want to have on their pages rather than just nice black screens of text. Um, you know, we have to use them nowadays, right? We're using them more and more and more on Visual Force pages, on other pages. Um, and if you've ever done kind of that development cycle of editing some JavaScript, zipping it into a file, uploading that file, refreshing the page, and again and again and again, it's, it's just mind-numbing and painful, isn't it? 
Um, so I used to use Dropbox when Dropbox had public links, which they then sidelot. I used to put my static resources in a Dropbox folder, work away there because it was quicker, um, <coughs> just load that up. <coughs> Sadly, uh, that doesn't work so anymore. Um, and also, what you've then got to do is you've then got to zip things up, change all your references anyway, and redo the whole process. So, what we've got in this resource bundle folder is another folder, <coughs> excuse me, uh, testzip.resource. And you can see here we've got a Mac OS folder because, you know, I'm on a Mac. We've got an empty images folder and a main.css folder. So, five points for whoever can tell me how I need to fix my error. I think they I knew I was in the right room. So, what we've got is we've got our final window. And what I'm going to do is quite simply in Finder. Oops. Copy across everything. Dot in there. Right. So we now have that in there, and I can now deploy that. It should fix it, shouldn't it? Um, should we change the CSS as well, please? Yeah. Why not? Uh, give me two colours. Laura, give me a colour. Pink. Pink. And give me a colour. Anyone? Come on. Anyone green. at all? Is that good? Green. 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 Sorry for picking on you, Laura, but. Um, you shouldn't be someone that's recognizable. So, we then go back into the command palette and we do deploy resource bundle. We hit test it. And then we sit here and wait. And that was nice and quick actually, so we'll take that. And what that's done in the background is it zipped everything up for us. So it's actually created that bundle, zipped it up correctly, done all of that work that, um, hands up who's ever zipped up a file and it's been like nested so that you've had like the file and then the zipped copy of the file and yeah, it's not, it's, you know, it's prone to me <laughs> using it. So refresh the page and voila, we have our image up, we have our green text and we have our pink text. So that's how easy it is. Like, you know, it's, it's a couple of commands, very quick, very simple. Um, and it just makes that process easier because, you know, Doing that, doing that cycle is just painful. So, there you go. Hopefully that's something that uh, a few people haven't used before. So, next job I've got, uh, now that my boss is really happy with that, he wants me to go in and test something. Um, so, what he wants me to do is uh, go in and just look through my contact list, but he wants me to check some list views are working properly. Um, so, I need to go away and I need to like, create, I don't know, 50 contacts, why not? Um, that's fairly easy to do, I can do that. Um, I can do that with data loader, right? Um, but you know when you, who here has got a project they've worked on where when you go into that project for the first time, you put in a new dev or whatever, there's some stuff you need to do. Like if I wanna, there's one uh, system we've got where it's for doing um, uh, like support programs and I've gotta create like three or four different records, get them set up properly, make sure all the connections are working before I can then test things because, you know, that's the way systems work. Um, but it's a pain because every time I want to do that, I've got to go in and do about 100 clicks and I don't like the mouse. I, you know, we've, all, we've all seen that I'm not going to touch the trackpad if it's possible. Um, yeah, even switching to the windows there, did you notice? It was all keyboard commands. Um, so <coughs> how, how can we do that? Well, everyone I assume has seen the execute anonymous stuff you can do. So everyone can do execute Apex, right? Well, we're going to do something else. So we're going to create an Apex script. And I'm going to learn to type. See, this is why I need to use the keyboard more, because I can't type. Um, and so we're going to give it a name. So let's call it my dream holiday script. So while that's creating, anyone used Apex scripts before? Yeah. Awesome. These guys down the front, I'm going to have to come up with something really good for you to be uh, surprised. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of contacts. And I want everyone to know that the reason I'm typing this out by hand is so you know that this is a live demo and not something that I've just made up. For Also so that I can get you all to check that it's going to work. Shout if you see me make a mistake. Uh, this is 
like doing uh, something visual on the radio, isn't it? Not very exciting. Um, Alright. Do poll dot add contact. Uh, no. See how cool it You can see it as well that because it's a fairly clean new org, but it's actually making suggestions where it can do for me. And we insert cons. Okay, so I'm going to save that. That's saved locally. Um, and all this is, is again, is another, another folder, another file on there. Um, but what I can do now is I can do execute, uh, it's run even, run Apex script, okay? And it's going to go away and it's going to run that script. And I'm going to have to use the mouse to go into the contacts tab. Um, but you can see here, we now have 50 new contacts created. Um, and what you can do is, because that is just you know, a text file, just some Apex code. If you want to put that in your GitHub repository, so that as a developer, you can just pull that down and run some code just to get some stuff working every time. That you don't want to, you don't want to put it in a package for deployment. You know, you don't want to do anything else with it. You just want to have it there for you to use. It's a great way of doing it. So there you go, Apex scripts. Um, the other thing I can do that a lot of people may not see is I can also run SOPL through here. So, have you guys used this? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Had to find one, didn't you? <laughs> so let's just do first thing, uh, last name, ID from contact, right? And we're going to execute that. And so this is running software in the background for us. Um, and as you can see, it brings me out a big load of JSON. So, uh, JSON pretty fine. Oh, I'm not as smart as I should be. Um, if I go into my SQL folder here, all that's doing is it's telling me where I need to look for my JSON file. It's been a long day, people, been a long day. So I can open up this JSON file, and what it does for me is it gives me the output of all of these contacts. <coughs> so not only does it give me the first name, last name, and ID as I've asked for, but it also gives me the rest URL if I want to go away and call it by the API, uh, the type obviously, and any other attributes I want. So this is really, really useful if you're um, if you are working, building APIs, or doing some integrations. You just want to run something and see what you're going to get back. Fantastic way to do it because that literally is what it's doing. It is running a software command as a REST API. Is the same response from the recipe? Yeah, exactly. So all, all that we've done there is we've, uh, we've weirdly crashed the bar at the bottom. Um, but all we've done is we've taken that query, sent it up by the REST API, and retrieved the results. So I've got the results here. If I wanted to manipulate that <coughs> using um, regex, I could do, and I could get all the first names out or whatever I wanted. Um, but if I'm doing testing against the REST API, it'll end it. Nice and simple. So, how are we doing for time? Is that 10 minutes? 10 minutes, okay. Cool, so I want to make sure we leave some time for questions, but I also want to show you this big button. So, um, who was in here for the Capado session just a minute ago? Cool. So, that was a great way of showing you how to do continuous integration, going through these things. Uh, what if I just want to deploy from one server to another? Hit my deploy to server button, I've got no deployment connection set up. Anyone used Maven's way to do deployment before? Yeah, you guys, right? <laughs> Anyone other than these people down here? Like, um, so yeah, so <coughs> we create a new deployment connection. Uh, I'm just going to call it Dream Ole 2 because, again, I'm really good at naming these things. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to enter. Oops. Oh. Uh, Dream on Lake Demo 2, I think it was. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a connection to another org. Okay? Um, and we're going to be asked to log in. Just copy that in a second because I'm terrible at remembering things. Uh, and it's a really secure password because it's a demo. And I'm going to get a verification code, of course, because, you yeah, <coughs> Alright, no one read all my secret emails. <laughs> I'm just going to be Amazon tickets trying to sell me something. 
Right. No one remember that code, it's secret. So, we just grant permission like we would do for creating a project regularly. Um, and then we can now go to, go to deploy to server. Um, I'm going to tell it my target is Dream on A2. So that all we've just set there. I can have multiple targets as well. So if I had um, a dev environment and I wanted to deploy to you know, someone else, you know, say we're working as a team together because we don't know how to use this. Um, <laughs> we could deploy our work to each other but also up to UAT as needed. Um, I'm just going to do a validate only one here. I'm not going to run any tests because I'm terrible, I haven't done it. Um, I can give it a name if I want, so a demo. That's some metadata if I want to choose what's in there. I'm just going to validate and it's going to go away. Um, and it's going to just run that deployment and uh, validate that it works. Um, and you know, watching deployments run is always, it could take two, ah, there we go, it's nice and quick view. Um, and you can see the results of it here. And we can then also go back and if I go to the options again, if I hit deploy to server, it'll go away now. And it'll take that stuff, deploy it to my dev environment, which while it's doing so in the background, right, it's quicker than I was. Uh, the worst thing about demos, <coughs> too many passwords and usernames. It asked me for a verification. Oh, I know. Has anyone ever registered their phone before? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we can see here that it's just deployed those things up there. And if I go to the <coughs> tabs, you can see here that I've got my demo tab created. And what I'm just going to do is hack the URL because I'm like that. I'm going to apex even slash demo. And voila, and it's also up in Google Text. So there we go. So that's shown us that we can deploy things again, nice and quick and easy. Uh, the final thing I just want to show you is let me just open up my own GitHub. This is not self promotion, don't worry. And what I've done is I've gone away and I've created, uh, where are we? London repositories, it must be there. Uh, Maven's templates, Maven's make templates. So I've cloned the Maven's make templates GitHub repository um, and I've added my own template, uh, which was for London's calling, um, where I may have also done this talk. Um, and where are we in here? London's calling basically done. So all I've gone away and done is just added in a structure that I want in there that says hello London's calling, um, <coughs> just for that demo. Um, what we can do now is if I go up here and go new Apex class, what you will see is that I have the London's calling class as an option. Okay. And you can clone that repository yourself. If you want it read from local, you can have it read from local. The way you set that up, you just go up here, click on the settings, and when we get down to, where is it? Maybe it's a bit involved. Have I gone past it, anyone? There we go, that's right in front of me. Um, so yeah, that's where you set it. So if you set it to local, um, up there, then you can put in the exact URL, uh, the exact path to where it is on your drive. Um, otherwise, you can put it to a public GitHub repository. And so if you're working in a company where you've got um, your own trigger pattern, for example, or you've got a particular um, format you like for uh, the top of the class, where you have you know, particular pieces of information you want to stay in there, you can add any of the any parameters you want, and it will read them out. In there. And that is a bunch of things that you didn't know maybe you could do. Some of you did. <laughs> That's it. So Q and A, if we have time, if there is any. Are we all signed? I think the applause should know about the Wi-Fi holding up there. Yes. We in MathMate is both. The new Salesforce API. Is it Log API? The, the the new Log API. Oh, the Log API. Log um, API. I think it may do already. Um, the Log API is something you have to pay for, if I remember correctly. Um, 
and I'm tight, um, which means I'm cheap and haven't paid for it yet. Um, so I'll have to go away and test that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, what, what was the Spanish for it? Tacaño. Tacaño, there you go. Um, <laughs> that's me. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know if it does yet. Um, I would raise it as an issue on the repository, just asking the question, and then if it isn't supported, we can probably get it added as a request in the future. You said that before, but are you planning some DX integration? Can you? So. <laughs> This is uh, one of those forward-looking safe harbor statements. The <laughs> ideal plan would be that we delete 90% of the code in Maven's mate and replace it with DX. Because DX does all the deployment stuff, it does all the org management stuff. We can then get rid of all of that stuff that we're maintaining for it and then start to add in cool new features, which everyone would prefer to have, I think, rather than us duplicating effort doing that. That's the plan. Long term, uh, DX is still in pilot. We have been working with Salesforce on the pilot. Um, and yeah, it's an ongoing kind of thing. It will work, they will work together as is anyway. Um, but it's one of those things we'd like to get the coupling tight and close so that, you know, it's easy again. Yeah, we don't want to don't make things difficult. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, or, or you can answer as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Carolina did this talk with me when we were in London schooling, so she knows all of this stuff just as well as I do. No, we're just thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more? Cool. Okay, well, in that case, thank you for listening. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you want a Maven's Way sticker, I have a bunch at the front. If you're a developer group leader and want a bunch to take to a developer group, come and let me know. Um, and even if I haven't got some here now, I can always get some shit to it. So. Okay? Cool. Thank you very much. Everyone.